you know, I want to let our um, audience know, I want to let all our um, participants know here that um, we are right now talking to amazing, amazing street techs. I love you guys so much. And it's Logan, Jonathan, and of course, Troy from Street Techs. And we've got our wonderful David uh, Stice, St right, David? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we've got wonderful David here and myself. We are um, here, uh, you know, introducing you guys to an amazing um, Street Techs. It, it, it's really good. It's worked great for both of us, David and myself. We both have different strategies, of course. So we wanted to share this with our, um, you know, our, our um, group as well. Everyone attending, thank you for attending and participating participating. Thank you so much. But we're going to, we've been diving deep inside, inside street techs, but I wanted to get more into it and, you know, kind of showcase them uh, as well, because they've been amazing for our business. And David has a different strategy as well as I do. But um, Logan, tell us a little bit more about street text and, you know, Jonathan, I know we've got some great, um, you know, different webinars in there. We've got our own private street text um, insider. Tell us all about it. But Troy, I, I really want to hear everything about street Tech, so everyone knows who you guys are. I'll give the, the, the quick synopsis, so to speak, here. For anybody who isn't uh, abundantly clear as to what we do, and I, we've done a lot of these LCA webinars, yep. and I know a good majority of the uh, community has come in and checked us out as well, which is phenomenal. But realistically, in a nutshell, what we try to do is um, instead of selling leads, mm -hmm. right, we try to help people generate their own leads. And I think that's the important distinction between us and most other lead gen companies is that we want to put the power in your own hands so that you can manage things properly. It, it's, it's really a hands-on approach. It's not necessarily for everybody. There are people who want to pay top dollar for a lead, don't care where it's coming from or anything like that and go and convert it. Great. Um, for the more transactional folk, it may not be the best fit every single time, but you still have an opportunity to come check it out. But what we're trying to breed is the more relational aspect and understanding that, you know, a, a home sale isn't just about signing a contract. It's right. about meeting people and building a relationship and building that know, like, and trust model and understanding that homeowners know other homeowners. So if you want to build a referral engine, great. How do you do that? Well, it's by pleasing your clients. How do you do exactly. that? It's, being there for them, building these relationships. So again, what we try to do is put statistical evidence behind templates so that you can come in and see, okay, of all of these different ideas and angles and calls to action and image types, what is right now most likely to lead me to the type of success I'm looking on, looking for based on what everybody else is doing? So we make it, you know, 15 seconds. You can click a couple buttons and you can have a live ad. Right. And, and ads aren't everything, though, because, again, it's understanding what's beneath. That's the important uh, functionality of street tech. So for new people joining us, we offer four, to, four days a week a live training um, exercise where we show up live. We teach people how things work, how to launch ads, offer Q&A just to get people going. But more importantly, we meet once every Wednesday, uh, which we just got off that call, as jo John was alluding to, as an opportunity for everybody to figure out who's doing what and why, knowing that what works for Janky and works for David, as you already mentioned, Janky, are, are, are two different processes. Exactly. Just like, like I can never, somebody always asks me, okay, I get a lead now, what, what do I do? Well, we, that's a pretty open-ended question. I really need to know who you are, what your market is, what's your experience. You know, I need to know so many things in order for me to tell you what to do because it's easy for me to turn around and say, well, I know a lot of people who have great success door knocking. Well, what you need okay. to do when you get an address only, let us go door knock. And we can't door knock here anymore in, um, you know, where we are because of COVID, we're restricted in door knocking. So how do you pick up the door knocking part of it and implement it in your, in your you know, social um, media or implemented in, in a system to where now it's not knocking on door. Hi, um, you know, I just sold or I just went pending or I have a coming soon. No, it's all about how you, you do it online and, and what are you doing? Do you, are you doing circle prospecting? Are you doing lead generation? Are you doing lead follow-up? Are you cultivating that lead? How are you cultivating that lead? And I know David, um, talk to us, David, what is, what is your system with street text? And then I can share my, my process as well, because I've had amazing luck. We just went pending on three listings. So I definitely want to talk about that. Yeah, great question. So <clears throat> if it's a, let's just say we're talking about address only leads. So I set up, uh, Street Text has this unique program to where you can notify different people when a lead comes in. So I have an email going out to my title agent 
Um, my title rep, if it's an address only lead, he goes and searches email address and phone numbers and then sends those back to my assistant. She plugs it in, um, you know, to the CRM there to where I could start making phone calls. Obviously when we're doing that, not all the phone numbers are correct. Um, but that's the first thing that I do. Um, we, you know, we've been blessed. We sell a lot of homes. I'm, I'm a pretty busy guy, so I can't go out and door knock or I don't have the capacity to go out and door knock, but every single CMA that comes through, whether it's an address, an email address, or a phone number, they're all getting a mailed out CMA. So we go through cloud CMA. I take about three, four minutes per lead that comes in. I put out the CMA, the assistant prints it out, mails it out, you know, does that a whole thing with our nice little trifold flyer. So every single lead that comes through is getting about a 20 page CMA, color, nice bound, sent out. Um, obviously if it's, uh, if we have an email address, I ask a question right away. Um, so, hey, just wanted to confirm, this is a three bedroom, two bath, 1500 square feet. If I get a response from them, it's a pretty solid lead right away. If I get no response whatsoever, I still mail it out and then I email out the CMA. I'm really big on mail just because when, you know, when someone asks for a CMA or an appraisal, uh, you know, a lot of the times emails get buried. If I'm sending them out a nice, you know, bound 20 page CMA explaining the entire process, list of all the columns, kind of so on and so forth, they're most likely going to keep that somewhere and it's going to be easy to find. They might put it in their junk drawer or whatever the case may be. But when time comes to list, you know, hopefully they're pulling that out and grabbing it. Whereas an email, man, that's hard to search after you get thousands and thousands and thousands of email. Um, and then obviously if there's a phone number, we're calling and texting right away, kind of asking the same thing. Hey, just wanted to verify, is this a three bedroom, two bath, 1500 square feet? And if I have them on the phone, I'll just start going into, hey, so just curious, uh, what prompted you to know your value of your home? Oh, you know, whatever the case may be. Oh, I think I'm selling next year. A lot of them just say, oh, I was just curious. I that's think that's usually, a great. I think that's that, a great question because a lot of us don't ask the question. Uh, a lot of us don't ask the right question, right? Yeah. Right questions, so to speak, right? And so what are those questions that you ask? I mean, you can get leads, street, te street text can generate so many leads for you and you, you can go crazy with the algorithms they have and you know the, the 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 different types of ads that they have you can go crazy on them but when you get that lead how are you converting that lead i think that is something that we all need to understand and learn and like david just said you're asking the key questions such as hey is this this person hey do you have a 3 2 i also add hey um, tell me a little bit about your home what has have you updated anything have you remodeled your home Mm -hmm. Get to know them on a personal basis, right? Um, I think that is very important as well. That yeah, is something that we brought up you know, this morning and it's something I always tell everybody. It's about starting a conversation which leads to a relationship which is right. going to lead to, li to a listing. A lot of people are so focused on getting the listing. Mm -hmm. You know, they see that somebody says that they're ready immediately. Well, that might have been... They might have just put that in. They're actually just curious, as you know, David's find, found out. But what what is it that is prompting them? Right? Why are they interested in their home? Um, you could even ask them like a nice uh, softer question of, of um, tell me what you love most about your home that you feel would affect its value. Right. Like, let's just get talking about this. And we, don't, we, we can throw timelines out the window. We don't care about that. Let's just talk about you in your home and why you want to know the value. And it may not be because you're looking to list and that's totally fine. Yeah. I'm okay it, with that. And, and it may be that you want to refinance. What is it that I can be mm -hmm. a resource? And, and when we say relationships, and that's the first thing again here is building that relationship, right? Um, I also talk a little bit about, okay, uh, people will do business with, people who they like and again connect with right and if you don't connect on a personal basis no matter what lead generation tool you use whether it's street text or any other 
it's not going to work because you have not connected on a personal basis, right? Well, that's where that relationship part comes in. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's really great. big for us as well. We always make sure that people go through um, seasonally or quarterly through their automations and figure out where the, the ball is being dropped because you never know and things change. And again, different follow-up tactics are needed for different areas. So, you know, if you've been asking the, 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 the similar types of questions, you know, and the, the common one, obviously, in that first autoresponding email is almost always a, um, a, a, an assist to your CMA. In other words, tell me about renovations, tell me about your home, tell me about things that are statistically, you know, important to me. But people, a lot of the times, again, understanding that we're in a relational business, not a transactional one, speaking in stats isn't evoking that emotional response every time. I mean, if you're asking those questions and you're getting answers, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right. That's the idea. But if you're noticing that you're not getting conversations initiated from your first few emails, what Troy was mentioning, I think is bang on. You have to understand, you have to ask a different type of question. The two questions I've always asked in my own career that's worked very, very well for me are, are exactly like Troy said. I always say, what is your favorite feature of your home currently? And if you could change any one thing, what would it be? The reason I asked those questions, neither of which, by the way, helped me in giving a CMA, but both are more likely to evoke that emotional response because instead of, yeah, my home's 1,500 square feet or 3,500 square feet, yes, my basement's finished or bleh, they're not fun questions to answer. They don't, they don't connect emotionally. And that's what I'm trying to do is connect emotionally, not statistically, right? So if I get an answer back to that question, typically I would get something to the nature of, uh, my favorite aspect of my home currently is my big backyard where we've hosted all our family functions for the last 20 years. Okay, great. It sounds like they're ready to consider moving, but that's going to be a pretty darned important thing for me to be able to find for them. The right. next item is going to be the, the real, we're always talking about digging for the pain points, right. but you can't dig for a pain point and, and, and not do it the right way because it comes off as that cheesy, pushy salesperson, the used car sales agenda, which we're trying to avoid, right? right? So if I say, what, if you could change any one thing about your current property, what would it be? That gives me everything I need to further the conversation and then ask those more difficult questions. But it doesn't seem as if I'm coming from that transactional standpoint. The response I got almost every time from, for that question was, I love my home currently. I just wish it didn't have so many stairs. Mm. Great. Love that answer because now I can turn around instead of saying, well, it sounds like you need to sell that home because it's got too many stairs. I'm not going to say that, right? I'm going to say, well, it sounds like we need to find you a home with a large space for family functions with fewer stairs in order to find that dream home. We're going to need to set a budget, right? right? In order to set a budget, we're going to need to value your current assets. And in order to value your current assets, the only way to do it properly is to have me come over, have a quick look around, set a price, and then we'll have a discussion. It, maybe it is the right move for you to get into this next dream home of yours. Maybe it's not, who knows, but we need to get you all those facts and the information and Next thing you know, you're, you built a relationship with somebody and now I can ask them, tell me about your home, square footage, finished space, because I've built a relationship. It starts with that foundation, just like you're building a home. You wouldn't just start driving your, 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 you know, posts into the ground, right? You, you need, you need a proper foundation. Otherwise the rest of the home crumbles. So I think that's a really great analogy, Logan. I mean, that's something, see, I told you, that's something I just learned. Like, obviously I know the relationship process, you know, um, and, and David was saying the same thing, pick up the phone, ask the key questions and get to know them. Don't just rush into getting the listing, give them what they want, leave it alone and have, I always have my ISA follow up and ask them these key questions. And of course, I, I'm always there to answer you know, and pick up the phone and then have a, another conversation. So it's, he would call that I call and, you know, it just goes back and forth into building that relationship. Again, I'm not running after your listing. And if they say, yeah, listen, I'm ready to sell now. I just want to, you know, the, know the price of my home and the value of my home. Yeah, bang, let's go, you know. Um, but again, understand what they're looking for. Realize that they're out coming to you for a reason. And they're coming to you to get to know what the market is doing and how the market is doing. And even if it's a good time for them to sell or not. Um, so Dante, what, what ad are you running right now uh, to get your, your seller leads? 
Um, I'm running the lead of what you, the value one. Um, which oh, yes. Worth, I believe that one is one. I'm also running a buyer ad where I'm getting a lot of listing leads from. That's how the other one just. Um, are you doing the Are you doing the the buyers to seller ad? Uh, no, I'm doing the one. There's one that is really very. Uh, people here love this. They want a bedroom and bathroom downstairs. So we created one with Jonathan, uh, not Jonathan, your brother. <laughs> Steve. <laughs> Steve, yes. We created a custom ad with Steve to, you know, having a bedroom and bathroom on the first floor. And we got a lot of buyer leads from that. And of course, when we get those buyer leads, they have something to sell. So buyer leads are not bad either. You know, they always have something to sell. And if they don't, good and well. But um, that's, you know, that's what when one of my uh, listings came from is that they said that our, our space is too small after we have our kids the homeschooling and, you know, all of this going on. We just don't have enough space. And uh, that's when, you know, I started going the other way around. Like Logan just said, we worked in the back end of, of getting to know what, what it is that they're looking for and then assessing their assets. Are they pre-approved, ready to buy now? And in working it backwards also. So those two ads have been fantastic for us. On the buyer's ads alone, that brings up a very unique um, topic, I guess, in that we had, I mean, we really here at Street Text focused on, on listings. Most of us are, are ex-realtors. We, we understand right. the, whole, the, the importance of controlling the inventory and all that fun stuff. Now, buyers are something that um, are easy to get a lot of clicks and you can get a lot of leads, but they're typically considerably less responsive. We find that based on, on how you're running your ads. So what you just mentioned, though, with the fact that you knew what people are looking for in your market, that is the most important aspect because what we find, we have a click to contact ratio on all of our ad templates. So when, when you log in, you can say, okay, for every click, what's the percentage with which people are also leaving information? Yeah. And when we're using our standard buyer's template, which is something like get a free list of homes in this area under this price. The click to contact ratio, I believe if last time I checked was around 11%, meaning that you're wasting 89% of your budget. Right. So what we've looked at was how do we find the same success we see on the sell side? What is the difference? So we started running a property listing ad where people can actually advertise their own listings. And sure enough, we had a 90% click to contact ratio, the exact polar opposite. So then it really got us thinking of why is that? Why op at, like offering an actual real life listing? Why is that better than saying, here's a list of homes in a similar area? The reason being is because people are in market. If I say a list of homes in this price, who doesn't want that? Lifelong renters are going to want that. Everybody wants that. Mm -hmm. But now if I, if I really put it down to a particular amenity for us, where we are, it's pools. Mm -hmm. I'm speaking to not only just looky loos, I'm speaking to people who are looking for a home with a pool. And it resonates with them. It resonates with them, right? Because now they're like, oh, okay, I do need a master bedroom. And oh, I do need a bedroom and bathroom downstairs because I have my parents coming here every now and then. So I do need that one space or I need a space downstairs for an office, so to speak, right? So I think that that is a big thing. And I think that ad really made a big difference um, over here for me. And, and it also brings in sellers, which you mentioned, and that's the important thing too, because me as a homeowner, if I say, do you want to see a list of homes in, let's say, Kelowna under a million dollars? I'm thinking, eh, sure, why not? But that's not getting me to take action. Whereas I know the one thing that I desperately want right now that I don't have is a pool. So even as a homeowner, I may look at that and say, okay, yes, I do want a list of homes with a pool. And now I'm actually actively seeking that type of, of, of property, which leads me to, I can't just buy a, a million dollar home without selling my current assets. So that's, that's the idea. It starts that conversation with a homeowner that you're going to get hopefully two sides of, of a deal on. Yeah. David, I had a quick question for you as well. Um, when you say you sent out the 20 page CMA, are you do it? You said you do it from cloud CMA, right? Yeah. Um, and then yeah. after that, and then do you, once you send out that, uh, do you do a follow-up? Do you have a follow-up system for that? It depends. If it's a address-only lead, okay. um, no, we don't really have a, a follow-up for that. If the phone numbers or the email addresses from my title officer didn't work, not really, no. Um, uh, going back to one more, uh, one step back with what Logan was saying as far as conversion with getting people to response, what I really like to think about is the client experience. So mm -hmm. these these 
these clients or these sellers or these leads, they didn't go on Facebook to look to sell their home, right? right. We, we didn't. And think about ourselves. So I'm looking at a new pair of sunglasses this morning because I scratched mine at the river. Um, if I send <laughs> in a... <laughs> I, have, I just ordered some sunglasses yesterday. There That's you right. go. So <laughs> if I'm online and I put in an inquiry and I get a response back right away, I'm pretty much always going to respond or most of the time I'm going to respond to that. If I get a response one, two, three days later, am I going to respond? Maybe, maybe not. Most of the time, probably not. So what I've really noticed, Logan, is uh, speed to lead is critical with it Facebook. Is. Absolutely critical. So if I get that lead in and I'm responding back within five minutes, it really doesn't matter what I say right? Like, <laughs> it just matters that you did it. Yes, you have to always ask the right questions. And everyone has questions that work for them based off their personality. I'm a very straight to the point kind of a guy. So I get kind of right into it. Um, but you know, uh, Janky, you might be more relational and relationship based. And so you might go into that. But really, it doesn't matter. It just yeah. matters how quickly you're able to get back to these people. And that's exactly. been where we've had success with this program is we have the systems in place and, and you know, the ISAs and the manpower to help us always respond back quickly. I usually go also by saying, you know, um, when they, when they answer, I always go right into it. Hello, Mr. You know, so-and-so I see that you, thank you. Actually, I just go right into it and say, thank you. I appreciate them. Is there anything I can help you with? And they will be nine out of 10 times shocked that, wow, you responded right away. And that is a plus because they know you're going to be um, there for them when they have any questions in the future. You are not avoiding yourself. Sometimes top, lead, uh, top, top team leaders always try to avoid themselves and you know pass it on, but don't do that because you want to be genuine because your name is out there and they expect to talk to you. If if you just pass it on to your assistant, that's a total different webinar. But you know, if you pass it on to someone else, they're going to feel like, okay, I'm not that important to her. I'm just going to go to the next agent. You know, they're dime a dozen out there. You know, so. That, that's a that's a great, I, I love how you both sort of shared that. It, it's that first impression, like speed to lead is important because I mean, you obviously are making a good impression. Um, and then how you introduce yourself is really key because that's setting the tone for the next introduction. And, and I know Jenki used Bomb I'm not sure David, if you use Bomb Bomb, but that's um, the, the way in which you introduce yourself, the way you personalize that, that follow up is, is really key. Getting leads with, like when you use Street Decks, like you'll get leads within oh, yeah. within a day or two of, of setting up your first ad in Street Decks, you'll get leads. And if you run a split test and you follow, like you'll, you'll get leads. How you introduce yourself is going to really set that tone and it's going to make it much easier to open that conversation up later. If it comes off, like you can be really to the point, but if you're if it's to the point in a really helpful way, that's great. If it's to the point in a, in a really demanding way, that's going to turn off people really fast. So if it's, you know, Troy has a formula, which I'm going to share here, which is the, um, it's, it's, you got your, your conversation, which has got an arrow. I actually wrote it down to the relationship. Right. And then once you got your relationship to the arrow, then you got your listing appointment. And so the key there is you, we were talking earlier about how do we start that conversation It's within the, within the way we ask questions in the beginning, when we start asking people, conversations well it's really easy to start building a relationship from that and well of course it's not going to take very long once you have a relationship with someone for them to invite you into their home and so building like winning a listing appointment when you already have some form of relationship started that's professional and helpful is way easier because the trust is at a 10 out of 10 like you're coming into the listing appointment strong and so your uh the way in which you're you're introducing yourself is really key so you can like be fast be, be speed to lead and be aware though, also, which is how am I introducing myself? So Janky, like, so you, so you're using, so you're using bomb bomb and, and everything else, correct? Yes, I am. So I'm using, so once a lead comes in from street text, whether it's a buyer or, or um, seller lead, whatever it is, you know, I'll see sometimes, so a lead just came in two nights ago. Um, it said their name, their information, their phone number, their email. And then it said, uh, what it says, a uh, sell time or something like that or uh, you know, time or whatever it is, uh, they said immediately. So I'm like, oh, 
let's go immediately. <laughs> so I picked up the phone. Now keep in mind, it was late at night and I'm calling someone at this hour and I'm like, hi, Mr. Smith, you know, this is, jo of course I said it with confidence. Say, hi, Mrs. Smith, this is John Key. I see that you are looking to um, really get some information about your home, um, you know, the value of your home. Is this a good time to talk? And he said, I didn't ever expect someone to call at this hour, but you are amazing. You don't even know me and you said I'm amazing. How does how does that work, you know? And I said, well, I'm here to help my clients. I'm always here for them. Um, I know I need to put my, uh, my guards up after a certain time, but when it comes to my clients and servicing them, I don't do that. And I just went, I went, of course, selling myself as number one at that point and, and getting to know them. This guy really was a, a straight shooter, but then at the same time, he was like, tell me more, tell me when he wanted to talk. So I took 10 minutes out and I said, you know, I'd love to chat more, but how about if we continue this conversation at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning? I'd love to share more information about your home. And in the meantime, why don't you make a list of what items you want to share, um, you know, when you're ready to sell? what items are, you know, that you've done um, remodeling to? Is it the kitchen? Is it the bedroom? Is it the, uh, you know, outside pool? What is it that you have done? Um, and let's, let's kind of dive into talking about that list first, and then I can give you comparable sales value. How does that sound? And he was like, oh, that all matters? And I said, yes, it does. So I dived into having a conversation with him and he wanted to just know the number of what the value of his home is. But I didn't want to share that because of course, I don't know what the value of his home is going to be. So 10, 10, 10 a.m. the next morning, he said, you know, I read about your Yelp review. You are an amazing realtor, yada, yada, yada. I just want to sign the listing agreement. And I wanted to explain to him the process of it, which I did. And far and few between you do get these kind of these kinds of leads, right? But not all these leads are going to be that way. Some will say, no, I'm not ready till next spring. What do you do to cultivate that? What is your process now going to the end of the year 2020? What is your process going to be? Are they going to be on that Thanksgiving, um, you know, giveaway that you do or the pumpkin that you give away during ha uh, Halloween? What is what is it that you're going to do with that particular lead going forward? is a key question. Are you gonna send them a letter saying, hey, I do have buyers that are looking in your area. Do you mind opening your home for me to show your home, right? Um, before you list it on the market, whatever it might be. What is it that you're gonna do for the next three months till they're ready? If you don't do that and you're not in their face doing some sort of lead generation, they're gonna to go to someone else. Well, and also, well, that leads me to another thought, you know, of you, you made a phone call maybe a little bit late and the results were phenomenal. Now, what would have happened, however, if you made that same phone call and instead of, I wasn't expecting you to call me so late and happy, 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 and you get yelled at? Mm. Does that mean you're not going to do that again ever again? Not at all. Not mm. at all. I am not going to do that because, again, speed, like David said, speed to the lead. I mean, you've got to be... If you, th there's a statistic out there that if you don't call them within a certain time, you've already lost them. You know, I mean, mental note, you've, they've moved on already from your site. You want to hit it when it's right there. You want to make sure that you at least somehow send a text message, send an email if you're not able to call, do something, reach out right away. Um, I know we have an automated system that, you know, that says, thank you for reaching out. Thank you for, you know, um, uh, coming to my, thank you for visiting my website, whatever it is. You've got to make that first connection so they know they're not automatically ignored um, or uh, an AI is not responding to them. Again, be genuine, be, make that relationship connection immediately. Yeah, yeah, so what you're talking about right there is really important, the speed to lead. And you mentioned like, yeah, there's an automation, street text, yeah, you have an automation that goes out immediately. Right. But what is that experience? David, you'd mentioned that, you know, so what is that experience? And you want to make sure that that experience is really important because when somebody is on Facebook, they're not there to list their, you know, sell their home. They don't wake up in the morning and go, oh, I want to sell my home. I'm going to go over to Facebook and check that out, right? Nobody does that. But they're, they're scrolling through their newsfeed, you know, exploring whatever's happening, and they see your ad, it piques the curiosity, they click on it. In that moment, they don't know, like, or trust you yet. Right. But you want to have that speed to lead. So what is that experience that you want to have, you know, let them have when that happens? And I'm going to share my screen if I can here, and I'll show you guys Wendy's autoresponder. 
And one of the reasons why it's really powerful because she does this. We have like a lot of our agents, they'll come in and the autoresponder is set up for them, but it's kind of like a, a templated cookie cutter version, right? We always recommend take it that next level. What is that experience that you want them to have? If it's just plain text, well, they don't see you. So you can see here, Wendy's using bomb bomb. Mm -hmm. right? It has this nice quick, you know, GIF in there that they're going to see it's animated. You actually, even just in that quick preview, are seeing a little bit of her personality, right? And this is what's key because this is her now. Right. right? I'm actually now meeting Wendy. Quick 20 second video. You, you, you've immediately, immediately set yourself apart. Right. Exactly. And you're, and you're building that connection. You're doing, you, you're building that referral, that relationship connection. And yeah, this might get embedded quite deep down inside their email, but you know, yeah. they're popping it out there. Yeah, and, and so here's, I mean, this is what she does. It's nice, sweet, short. But, Hi, you know. I'm Wendy with LV Sweet Homes Realty. I got your request for the home price valuation and I am on it. I also attached a link below. Oh, internet. <laughs> which my profile. And we'll be sending you a quick friend request very soon. I just want to make sure that you have a chance to meet me. Well, I hope to talk to you soon. Have a great day. So she kept it to the point, exactly what I do as well. Um, keep it to the point. Keep it to where, hey, it's great to meet you. I want to send you something, so look out for it, and I'll follow it up with a phone call. That's how we got our second lead into pending, is that I went ahead and I resonated in the sense I, I told them, hey, I got your message. I will be sending this out to you shortly. And then, of course, follow it up with a note card saying thank you. You know, if there's no phone number, follow it up with a note card. Somehow, somewhere, some, somehow get in touch with them. Um, you know, connect with them, build that relationship with them. I think that is that is in any lead generation system you do, simply. Something that's oh, it's so key for me is, so is the fact that, you know, and David, you mentioned it, and I think you nailed it. The day you join real estate, the second you get your license and the first time you meet your broker or anybody who's ever sold anything ever in their lives, the first thing that's mentioned is speed to lead. Yes. And it, it's, it, it's never been any more important than it is today. However, the, the thing that we're finding is being overlooked more and more and more is quality of content. Because imagine this, every single other individual out there, every other agent is being told the same thing, speed lead, speed to lead. Now with street text, when a lead comes through your funnel, you're the only one who gets that lead unless they are clicking on somebody else's ads doing other things. But regardless, this is how I've always operated. I operate under the assumption that five to 10 other agents get every lead I get the second I get it because first off, it makes you think I better send them something before these other 10 agents fair speed to lead. But if the other 10 agents have an automation that it's able to fire something to them immediately as well, how will I stand above them? How will I stand out? What quality of content can I offer that's better? And for me, the only thing that I can offer that no other human on the entire face of the earth can offer is me. I'm the brand, my personality in real estate, you're, you're solopreneurs to a point. You may be part of teams and brokerages and all these great things. Phenomenal. But you are your brand, yeah. right? And so what I like to do and what I saw with Wendy's video there as well, my personality is certainly not going to mesh with every single other person out there. There's going to be people who, who watch my video and there's going to be people, who, I, I've heard it myself, people who watch Wendy's video and go, that's not who I want to use as my realtor. That's fine. I would so much prefer having them see my video and say, nah, I don't like this guy. He, he's not going to work for us. Rather than me nurture that relationship for a few months, show up at their door. I'm the same person in video as I am, at, in, you know, in, in video. I, I'm, the, and I'm that same guy. So if our personalities don't mesh then, well, we just waste each other's time for three months and it's right. not going anywhere. You right. know, so Every other agent, there's always going to be somebody who sold one more home than you have this year. There's always going to be somebody who has a year more experience, somebody who's, who's better than you at something. It, always. There's, it's always the case. No matter how well you're doing, there's always somebody who can offer something more. The one thing nobody else can offer is who you are as a person. And again, even if you're part of a big team. Sometimes that's what people want to hear. You know, I see a uh, husband and wife teams all the time. They do very well because people feel like they're being taken care of, 
right? Or, or you have a large team, same thing. When I want a question answered, I know there's going to be somebody who's going to reach out. Whatever your structure is, there's a benefit to that. So figure out what that benefit is and offer it to people. I, I think also another thing, guys, um, uh, the, the, the uniqueness of street text where it comes into where, you know, Jonathan or Logan or even Troy help us with is uh, the masterminds we have. And it is a weekly mastermind. It's not just like, okay, we sign up with us and then we leave you to your to the wolves. You know, you guys are very hands-on and that's what I love. You guys help us even when we, like the custom tweaks class, I love that because I can actually talk to Steven and say, okay, Steven, I'm struggling with this, help me here. Um, and they go into our, you know, into our um, uh, account and they actually try to, do what they can to help us out. So guys, that's amazing what you do. I've, I've, I've seen so many shiny objects out there and, you know, being a part of this, and I'm not just saying it because we're on this panel together, but I genuinely have never seen a, a, a company or a lead generation tool work so fantastically as you guys have done uh, or your, you know, of, of Street Text because like I said, I just had three going to pending, three listings going to pending. Well, of course there was nurturing done. And of course there was conversations and relationship building done at that, you know, at that levels of all, but I wouldn't have had that need, so to speak, if it wasn't for the few tweaks that Stephen had done on my account. Right. Wow. Um, especially while running this ad of one bedroom, one bath downstairs on a first floor or whatever that is. I wouldn't have known that if I didn't actually participate. And they always, there's, there's a saying in our real estate industry is that if you're not consistent in your marketing and you're running away to shiny objects and you, you go away within 30 days or 40 days or 60 days, you're not going to get any results. Right? Well, it's funny as oh, a street that. text coach myself and, and, you know, not to speak for, for John and Troy here as well, but my favorite thing is our community because I, I you know, I get asked questions all the time and I do my best to answer, of course, but I haven't sold real estate. It's been since I've been doing this, it's six years, right? And things have changed a little bit. So the ability for our clients to speak to one another and, and learn from one another. And, and, you know, I see one of our clients will post something in our private insider group before any of us can even get to that and answer the question. There's 20 comments, right? Troy, why don't you take some time and talk about the, our community a little bit on that end? Yeah. One of the things that it, it blows my mind, because we know in real estate and actually in, in a lot of businesses, there, it, there's so much, there's competition, right? And so we all don't want to share our secrets. We've got this little secret sauce in there that what's working for us. And so we're holding our cards really close to our chest, right? This community is not, they're laying their cards out on the table and going, this is what I do. And in fact, can you give me feedback on how that could be better, right? Right. Um, and so it's just this phenomenal like community of people actually all growing together in their business and, and helping each other out. And so uh, that just speaks volumes um, to everybody's in it to, to win together, right? Rising tide floats all ships. Yeah, they, they so let's do it together. We, we all fundamentally believe that there's more than enough for everybody. And, and look at Wendy. She's in Henderson, Vegas. Like, it's one of the most competitive markets on the planet. And she's doing so well. And she's sharing what she's learning. And she's, she's out there and she's doing it. And then she learns something from someone else. She implements it right away. And it's, you know, when we, when we share what we're learning together, everybody, everybody wins. And as a real estate, like, in real estate, like, the more we do that, the more we as an industry, like, one of the coolest things I was, was talking about with Ira in the office here is, something I'm really proud about with real estate in general this year is because of everything shifting digitally, it sort of fast forwarded where the industry was going in 10 to 20 years. It brought it to date. Consumer behaviors changed. And so if you think about that from real estate for a second, where is real estate going to be 10 years from now? Well, it's this was it today. And what makes me so incredibly proud is it's real estate agents who was able to bring that sort of concierge white glove service to the market. And, you know, in, in fitness, there's other like services like Peloton and, and uh, uh, these other ones that are, they're sort of like exploding right now. In real estate, it's the service professionals that are exploding right now. And I think that says something about this industry and the state of where it's gonna be in the next 10 to 20 years. 
because it's really, it's, it's that personal relationship and that, that white glove concierge tailored service that, that is really like, there was a, there's a real estate agent locally to us in, in Kelowna and I was just like, wow, this is so cool. He went and he messaged everybody in his database and he said, if there's anybody who needs someone help them pick up groceries, I'm driving around and I can go get it for you. Like what a cool thing to do. Right. That, that, that just shows his heart. And uh, I, I just think, yeah, that's, that's the coolest thing. Like, and the community, like you were talking about, Troy, that is the heart of the community. Mm -hmm. it really is. Well, I hard. actually picked up uh, quite a few tips from that community, by the way. I mean, again, like you said, we share as a community. That is exactly so true because that's where I picked up, you know, about the bomb bomb with, from Wendy and from Stacy and uh, Sebastian. She does amazing as well as, um, you know, some, uh, like I said, Donna Swansea. That's where I learned so much from and implemented all these tools in my business and took bits and pieces out of everyone and created my own brand with you know street text and how i need to really um uh, market myself and build that relationship which, which now you can bring to the community yeah. right be like hey i took all these ideas this is what i put together <laughs> yes. what do you guys think yeah. right yeah. And, and both Jen and Wendy, who have been instrumental in, in helping others get set up and get going, they'll be the first to admit or, or, or suggest whatever you want to call it, that the community was directly involved in getting them going. And you look at something, it just happened to a mastermind or two ago. We had one of our, our more successful agents. She was showing something she was doing with bomb bomb and home bot and all these things. So she came to the mastermind, shared her screen, showed the video. Everybody looked at that. And there was a couple people who looked and said, why aren't you doing, I can't remember exactly what it was, but why aren't you doing it this way? And even though it's working for her, she didn't know that that was possible. So she was like, okay, well, that's interesting. So these other individuals learned something from her and by her sharing to the right. group and teaching them, she learned a way to improve what she was already doing. So now what she's doing is now better. So next time she shares with other people, it's a more complete strategy and they may add more on top of it. And, and that's the, the, the hardest crux to get over in this industry. Again, as, as, as Troy was mentioning, the fact that traditionally, since we're solopreneurs, for the most part, we're very much responsible for our own growth as people and, and, and business individuals. You oftentimes play your, your, your hand pretty darn close to the chest. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't recall ever a time going into my um, office with the, the old brokerage I was with, finding somebody who was crushing for sale by owners or doing something phenomenally well and ask them to share what they're doing and have them give me their A material. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. You know, I, I was best friends with some, some people in my office. And if we're not co-listing homes, I'm not getting the A stuff. I can tell you that. Whereas with the community that we have, we have people in, you know, Portugal and different countries all over the place, but the majority of people are concentrated in North America and even people within the same area are more than happy to let other people know it's working for them with the idea that they're going to get so much back from the community as well. And again, that's the one it was, I don't want to call it unintended because that was certainly our intention from the get go, but it was certainly unexpected for it to go quite the way it's gone. And we honestly have all the different things that we offer. Um, the most proud of anything that we are is legitimately our insider group and the collaboration we see with our agents. Well, Logan, let me, let me interrupt you for a minute because that's, that's all great. That's all great. And unfortunately I haven't taken advantage of all of that. Like I should, but the fact of the matter is street tax works. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, so I started in June and have closed three transactions off of that already. And I have tons and tons and tons of nurtures going. So if you just simply get the program and start making the calls, start making the emails, start making the text messages, it's going to work. Yes. Your conversion is going to go up as you get more creative, as you learn what questions to really take in, but just sign up and start making the calls, making the texts, making the emails and getting all that and then make it better and better and better. But I mean, I, within the first week, I had my first listing appointment within I, the first week. I totally, oh. I totally agree with you, David. Sorry to cut you off. But like you said, within the first week, I actually did the free trial. And when I did that free trial, I started getting leads and I'm like, oh my God, what is this? Like, I don't know what to do with all this. 
right. that's what I love about what David just said, that you just try it, try it out. And when you see these amazing things happening, you're going to wonder what to do next. And he just, David just said it, that he got his first listing appointment on, in his first week. Right, David? Yep. It just closed on Monday, actually. So, that's so awesome. yeah. And it, you know what I find super interesting? So um, we run the seller ad that's like, if we had someone to buy your home, would you sell it? Or it's, it's something like that. I can't remember the exact. If someone wanted to buy your home, would you sell it, find out its value in the current market? Yeah. So that's what we run. It's 20 bucks a day. Um, I'm in Southern California. So 20 bucks a day probably gets me five, six, seven leads per day, which is a lot when you're doing, you know, CM, if you're doing CMAs, actual CMAs for each one of them, right? Um, I'm, gonna but I'm noticing that. and find super interesting that first lead that I, or that first listing appointment I got was an 82 year old dude. Wow. If you would have told me <laughs> that an 82 year old dude would be clicking on my Facebook ad Giving me all of your information. I'd have told you, Troy, Logan, Jonathan, y'all crazy. But <laughs> legit. He was I, have to, I definitely have to run that ad. So, Jonathan, please let Stephen know to get in touch with me. I would love to run that ad for sure. <laughs> it's just, it's, awesome. it's amazing the, the age range and the, the type of people that are on there clicking on these. And um, when, when I get a lead and it's has a phone number in there, Oh, I'm dropping everything. And I'm calling that right away. Cause those are just hot, hot leads. Um, uh, whether it says immediate, not, and I, I like to future pace things. So, right. Hey, yeah, you know, Troy, I know you're probably not ready to sell your home today, but just curious, are you thinking of selling in the next two to three years? Yeah. And yeah. then they <laughs> True back story, like, actually. Oh, no, no, no. I'm thinking like two, three months. So instead of me saying, hey, are you thinking of selling in the next two to three months where it's like commission breath, like yeah. I'll throw it way far out there. Hey, are you thinking of selling in the next two or three years? Oh, no, no, no. Well, we're thinking like early next year. They're like, okay, so we got to start getting the process going yeah. then. So I love that. There, I there's, love definitely, that there's definitely, there's definitely that awesome. things that you need to learn to say and not say, but most importantly, I mean, the leads work. I mean, they're, they're yeah. good leads. Yes, they're not going on the Facebook to find uh, a listing agent to sell, but they'll squirrel off. And, you know, if you're a professional and you say the right things, you're going to get an appointment. And everyone wants to know what the value of their home is in this market. 100%. So that, that's that's another interesting thing because yeah. obviously there's all of those different websites and I won't name them that, you know, give you their value. Um, What's funny is when you guys asked me to do this seminar this morning, I was sitting here going through and doing some CMAs for street tags. But uh, what I noticed in Southern California are the homes. So we have a lot of cookie cutter homes out here where it's, you know, communities and all the homes are very similar. So everyone pretty much knows their value. A lot of the leads that I'm getting are for our more rural properties where, you know, those estimates are way off those online estimates. So um, those have been kind of our bread and butter on um, the kind of leads you get. So it, it's just kind of interesting to me, the clientele that are clicking on there and then the type of homes um, that you're getting inquiries for. Most of the time you go to those other websites and they're so far off on their prices. So they really appreciate knowing their home's true value. You know, and the thing I like the most is that you're, you're generating your own leads and everything's based on ROI and it's so much easily, it much more easy to manage when you can see the dollars and cents every day and make these little changes. And even if you come in to street text with the, 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 the longest commitment we have, the annual commitment we'll call it, which is 1920, $1,920 to, to I am. <laughs> right? which is what most of our clients do because I mean, if you're going to do it, do it right. Yeah. But think of it this way. And, and, and David, you mentioned you're at 20 bucks a day. Everybody has their own comfort levels. I would say the majority of our clients are between seven and nine dollars a day on ads. We definitely get people, especially in, in you know California and Florida and places where there's a little bit more going on in terms of you know what's happening. Like so hard. Right? They they go up a little bit. But we've done the math. And if you, even if you just look at something like the the annual commitment coupled with a daily ad spend of nine bucks a day and that $9 ad spends every single day, you're spending for 365 days, $9 per day, plus the 1920, you're around 5,250. You're, you're under $6,000 for the entire year of marketing. And I don't care what market you're in, 
That's one at most no. two deals. That's Absolutely. a full deal in most markets that we serve. But realistically, the idea is you don't need that commission breath because if you're spending twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars, whatever it is for, for your marketing for the year, well, now I got to make up ends to make up that 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 difference. So now it's I'm really pushing for those sales. Whereas when your your imposition level is that low, you really can tackle this a little bit different. If you don't make a deal in your first two months, three months, four months, six months. Yeah, it's not comfortable necessarily, but if you can't close one of these deals in a year, we've failed you, you failed yourself, something has gone horribly, horribly wrong, mm -hmm. right? So, and that's the idea. So long as you follow the strategies that are laid out, so long as you follow the community, so long as you do what you know is, is within your wheelhouse and you remain consistent, the ROI is there. It really is. And not everybody gets a listing um, appointment even in, or, or their listing or their first uh, listing appointment in the first month or two. It doesn't happen for everybody. It happens for lots of people, but it doesn't happen for everybody. And that's fine. Everybody is on their own unique timeline. Everybody finds their success at their own times. Sometimes you're going to follow somebody else's process and it's just not going to work for you. Yeah. That's fine. We, we alluded to it at the beginning of the call, door knocking. Door knocking is one of those great activities that works for most people that do it. But I'll tell you, myself included, I despise door knocking. I hate the activity. I used to do it all the time. I personally don't like it at all. So for me to remain consistent, I'm probably going to supplement that activity with something different. And I'm going to lead back to the mailer component. I've got three styles of mailers that work phenomenally well for me that initiate conversations. So I don't need to go knock on doors anymore. Right. Right? But if I you're not going to yeah. do one, you have to do something else. Exactly. You have to replace it with, and especially now, especially now that we are in this environment, especially in California, David and David and I know very well how the weather has been and, you know, ashes everywhere and, you know, it, but people are still going out to buy homes. There is no stopping the real estate market here. So you don't stop. You got to be creative. Um, it was such a pleasure talking to everybody. You know, I love street texts, like I always say, and, you know, Logan, Jonathan, Troy, you guys are amazing, right, David? I mean, we've done some fantastic and we continue to grow. Like I said, I've already, you know, I'm already in three years or four years and, you know, return of investment if you really think about it. So, uh, you know, it's, it's Street Text is, is it for any kind of seller lead generation tool. I love it. Thanks so much. Right. Really appreciate guys. it. Thank you, David. Yeah, appreciate you guys. Okay. Uh yeah, we'll wrap up. Anybody, uh, there's that, uh, the Street Text link there for the free trial. Um, obviously, it's free in that you do not pay us a penny until uh, if and when you decide you're ready to take full advantage of us. You will be responsible for your own ad spend, of course. We're not going to cover the ad spend for you, but we're going to make sure that that ad spend is spent appropriately and that you're, you're getting the starting ground and, again, laying that foundation. And whatever your foundation is, it's going to be different. Janky, David, you guys have completely different processes. Mm -hmm. But, again, it's important to come in and start laying that foundation and building upon okay. it. And understand that it's a process, but that's we're all here to win together. So, hopefully, like Troy, we'll on next webinar. Yeah, and like Troy said, it's a relationship. You know, you convert, you, what is it, conversation, relationship, and then take it down to, you Conversation know, leads you to go. relationship, leads to a listing. There you go. That's it. That's see again, every, and I tell, I say this to my, my agents, every day is a learning experience. You grow every day. If you take a little bit of nugget and implement it and make it into your, put, add it into your brand here in a few months, you've got a beautiful brand with street checks. Thank That's you so much. That's our core value right there. Growth. Growing Absolutely. as a person, growing, growing as a business. I love that. Exactly. And commit, commit to it. You know, you sign up for the free trial, commit to it. Make sure that you're able to respond right away. Make sure you have everything set up, ready to go. So you're getting the notifications. Just commit. And if you commit to those seven days, I guarantee you'll sign up. Exactly. And, and, and follow through with it. When, they, when you get the leads, just don't sit on them. Follow through. Consistency is key to any real estate business or any business at all right? Absolutely. Okay. Well, thank you guys. I don't know if anyone has any questions, um, but if they do, um, definitely, you know, sign up for the free trial that's uh, right here on the chat, you know, in the comments here. We'd love to have you try it out. You know, this is a time to ramp up your business for the next year or so. So um, let's get it going. And we do a live webinar every day of the week. So yeah, come sign up for your trial, come ask questions, get your answers and make a decision for yourself whether or not it's uh, what you're looking for. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you guys.
Thank you, everybody. Bye for now. Cheers. Bye.